625-2820. Stranger to debate, serving as a trial attorney in three different states and making multiple appearances on nearly every major television network, he has made a name for himself in the legal world. He spends most of his time running his firm here in Jacksonville, and he just opened up a Beaches location. We're going to welcome attorney John Phillips, owner of the law offices of Yay. John Phillips. Thank you so Woo! much for being uh, you here. Know, I wouldn't trade Matt Lauer for the chat, though. I mean, it's, this <laughs> well, is, this is yeah. it. Yeah. So let's talk about that. How did the, a local Jacksonville attorney become really a national voice on some of the most biggest cases being discussed right some now? Of it, some of it was happenstance. You know, with, with our first case that we did, the Today Show, uh, a young lady got ran over on Daytona Beach. She was a Kansas tourist, and it was a compelling story, and the Today Show picked it up. Um, Jordan Davis was a, a friend of the family, uh, his parents were, and, and you know, we, we walked the walk with them, still are, which mm -hmm. I think we're going to talk about. So it's it's been it's it's been an amazing ride, and you know once people build faith in you as a lawyer and realize you you got passion and compassion, they they keep calling. Thank God. I think it's interesting. You have such a, a huge presence on social media. How has social media sort of changed the legal you know system and even trying a case? Right. I'm doing a speech on it next week. A Pecha Kucha. I think that's how you pronounce it. What? And it's exactly and. Um, <laughs> and you know, social media is, it's so great, but it's, you know, it's terrible too. Going mm -hmm. into the Michael Dunn trial, we actually had death threats. Um, oh, and wow. somebody threatened to kidnap my child. What? Yeah, and it's because you can hide behind, you know, the right. internet. And right. so it's, it's great for marketing. It's a way that, you know, a small firm like mine can compete with those firms that spend you know, millions of dollars a year advertising. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about the case you're involved in, the killing of 17-year-old Jordan Davis. So let's talk a little bit about what your role in the case is. And also Michael Dunn, who was convicted of murdering Davis, is now filing an appeal. So kind of walk us through that. 180-page appeal. I read it uh, day before yesterday because the Times Union wanted a quote on it. Your news partner, by the way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Good and, job. Uh, you know. And so, but it's, you know, you expect with any major conviction, any major trial, that there'll be an appeal. Uh, they are appealing a whole different mm -hmm. bunch of issues related to the media, related to whether the judge should have done, you know, what the judge did, and instructions to the jury. It, it, all, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, you know, 180 pages worth. I thought the interesting uh, part was they said, well, he didn't really mean to kill all those other kids. Right. That well, was, he just shot at them ten times. That was the major <laughs> point, and that was, a, you know, a quote that I gave in the table. I'm like, you don't get out of your car and mm -hmm. fire, fire wildly and not intend to do harm. To hurt somebody. But it's, you know, when, when the governments pay, and this is, this is a pu court, public appointed, um, government appointed appellate lawyer, why not take a chance? And the, the beauty of it, or the, you know, the benefit of the family, how we sleep at night, how the family sleeps at night, is he's got to win both. And there were two separate trials, two separate defense teams, you know, two separate juries, and both of them gave him a, a conviction which would face essentially life in prison for him. So, and talk about your role in the case. Yeah, I got the call before Jordan had actually been buried, um, but I didn't know the family before that. And originally, we had a situation where the defense lawyer for Michael Dunn was out in the media talking about the kids had a gun and they left the scene and they were they were victimizing the victim. And the family just wanted, you know, a, met a message to put, you know, to put out there. And, you know, national media was on the way down. And these are just people that were living their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so it started off just kind of as a, as a shield for the family and as the spokesman. And, and it grew and we handled the civil suit. And I sat nearly in every day of trial. And, and when the second conviction came down, we were expecting our second child. And so the conviction, I, I had this... This, this crazy sense that I needed to be at the courthouse, take my wife, had to be at the courthouse by three, you're okay, I'm okay, let me run to the courthouse. Verdict came down 20 minutes later, and you know I cried teary-eyed, Michael Dunn had been convicted, teary-eyed back to the hospital, and Ron came and visited us the next day and it's it's still one of the you know the, the most amazing they're really a you know, great 24 family hours. Too. they're fantastic yes, and, and they your are. passion is so evident and your compassion for this family but let's we're going to switch gears a little okay. bit uh, we want to talk about something else the amount of information being released uh, by ashley madison hackers is is coming out like quite staggering tens of I millions of emails locations birth dates credit card transactions and personal data so john is there any action that the people who are releasing this information can face it, absolutely i mean in possession of this yeah you know it's, it? it's hard to defend the people that were on ashley madison or take their side in this but they were victims too you know they suspected that their privacy would be maintained and they had a warning saying if you keep if ashley madison keeps this up 
we're going to release it. And so it's. But at it's, that point, it was too late, though, right? It, it, well, they didn't do what they needed to do. They they had an ultimatum against them, and they could have stopped taking down the website, uh, as I understand it, and they didn't. And they pushed it. They pressed their luck. I kind of like it. We just hired Matt Hunt uh, as a divorce lawyer, so it's like Matt and I were talking on the way here, like. This might work out. You know, oh, there's yeah. going to be a lot of upset There's going to be a lot of that going so, on. It's going to be like yeah. a reference page for it, your it reference is, book for you. It's, you know, <laughs> we were talking about whether it's even legal to possess it because this is essentially stolen property. And so possession mm. of stolen property, I saw a news reporter last night on a national news show like going through it. I'm like, you might not want to do that. But if they released is, it, how was it stolen? It, it was hacked. Yeah, and well, speaking of that, do, is there going to be any recourse against these, I guess, the culture, if you will, that's caused this hack, that's actually hacked in? Is there going to be a recourse for somebody to be able to sue or go after the hackers? I, I would think so. You know, they're, they're, the FBI is looking for those guys right now. They're taking it They're taking it seriously, and we're seeing it all over the place with Home Depot and Target and all of this customer information. And, and with the Ashley Madison, some people are on Ashley Madison just to live out of fantasy. They, they don't actually follow through. Mm. Some people, they probably put in fake names. I could easily say, I'm going to send you, I'm going to sign you up to Ashley Madison and see what happens to okay. you. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so you, get, you have all of that. And so if somebody's name appears on the Ashley Madison list, that doesn't mean that they did the deed. Right. Well, that and, will be their defense, that, I'm, I'm sure. Say, <laughs> it wasn't me. Don't give them excuses, Mr. Phillips. No, I know. I, you somebody know. will try <laughs> to use that. He's already we, lawyered we it, it up. Yeah. We, got, we got personal injury, we do criminal offense, we do family. I got to cover it all. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. we do want to also talk about new development in, in the Oscar Pistorius case we all thought that he may be released from prison and moved to house arrest that's what we're hearing after serving 10 months of his sentence the move was blocked which i thought was very interesting because that's just part once you serve a certain percentage for non-violent offenders which i thought was interesting he was being released anyway because right. you shoot your girlfriend and kill her i don't know how you're not non-violent but now that's being blocked so walk us through what's it, going on with it's, that it's tough to understand because it's a completely different system mm -hmm. there wasn't a jury system it was a judge who heard the evidence and decided it was this this lower level of manslaughter rather than murder. I covered this case some for HLN and CNN and, and we re did recreations and it was murder. You know, it was, he, he shot into his own bathroom door saying that he thought it was a stranger and breaking in. Well, who, who breaks in and goes to the toilet, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. And so it's, I like that another judge is overlooking this judge's decision because they were, they're challenging this, the parole board's decision and they're looking at trying to keep him there for longer. Um, you know, this is a guy that, that killed somebody and just because he's a celebrity, um, you know, celebrity privilege, white privilege, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. he shouldn't he shouldn't get the, you know, get the breaks. So how is it that a few days ago we hear about he's going to be released and then yes, released under conditions, of course, and then yesterday sometime we hear that he's not going to be. That's like a case of psych. Right, it was a case of psych, and it's it's the it's the power of the public opinion in the media. Mm. You know, this guy was was they were trying to get by with something, you know, and and when when the world starts putting that under a microscope, you see things change, and it's it's you know going back to the conversation about the internet, it's a powerful tool. Yeah, and you know we've seen it. We had a case that 200 plus people were falsely identified as sexual offenders or sexual predators on their driver's license. Literally just printed by mistake, they hit the wrong button. And we had two cases, we, we tried it in the court of public opinion, and not only did the DMV change the system, but we got a settlement for the family. And, and you know, that's the kind of scrutiny that you need on situations like and sometimes this. Sometimes like that celebrity can work against you because uh, probably nobody would have known about that case had he not had the celebrity. He wouldn't have had a leg to stand on, uh, so to speak. Oh, All right. well, John. nice job, John. <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining us. And for more information about John and his law firm, visit knowthelawyer.com. All right, well, coming up on the chat. No, he did not say that. All right, he did, though. All right, looking and feeling your best in the gym, the do's and don'ts when it comes to 